Hey everyone, it's Josiah. Welcome to the second part in putting your R code and models into production. This video is gonna focus on creating functions. Um, and you'll see why. So after watching that first video, I hope that you kind of get a general idea of what an API is. And now you might be asking yourself, okay, I, I, I kind of get it. Now, how can I actually make an API in R? Plumber, that's how. Uh, Plumber is an R package, it's super cool, that turns R functions into API endpoints. And because of this, this reliance on um, functions as like the way we create R API, we need to review functions. Because without an understanding of functions, we're not gonna be able to actually put our code into production and create these APIs. Functions are code shortcuts. Um, in R, they're a special kind of object that helps us do things faster, essentially. The anatomy of a function is really simple, right? So we're gonna assign a function into an object name just like we'd assign any other object in R. And to create a function, we use this thing called function, meta, I know, and then we can provide arguments to that. And think of arguments as placeholder values. And then whatever follows inside of these curly braces after we say function and whatever arguments we want to define is what that function will do. So inside this, these curly braces, we have the ability to do anything we really want. And that function that we define will do what's inside of this function body, okay? So whatever is printed last is also what is returned from that function. So in this example, we can see we're taking in this argument called arg, and then we're just printing it in the function. That's all we're doing in this function. So whatever you provide as arg is what's returned from the function. Okay. So here we can see we're now going to be able to use the function called my fun, and we're providing the character string returns whatever it is given because my function returns whatever it is given. So now that we've provided that arg as that character string, it returns the character string to us. Now that we have a general idea, I want to go over like a more apt example. Like, um, how do we create some useful functions? Uh, and for this example, I'm going to look at the median household income in Boston, Massachusetts. We're going to be using uh, a data set I've curated from an already curated data set from the Boston Area Research Initiative. It comes from their annual release of uh, census metrics um, in the Boston area. So here's just what the data kind of simply look like. We have seven variables. The first is the median household income. Then we have three variables on the attainment rates of certain levels of education. So people with less than high school degree, high school graduation, and then some college and bachelor's degree. Then we have two variables for uh, racial identification in a census track. The first is white and the second is black. Boston's a really white city, so white kind of, the proportion of white people in a census tract gives us more of an idea than the, sense, the proportion of black individuals or Asian or any mixed variable just because um, it is so homogenous. Okay, so let's just think through a simple example of a function here where we want to filter our data set based on some variable. So in this case, we wanna filter our uh, data set, which is now called ACS underscore EDU based on the variable medium household income. So here we can see we have a super simple filter statement where we're filtering our data set to, to only show us rows that have a median household income of greater than 90,000. So when I approach creating a function, I, I, I create this general idea of the functionality I wanna go after, um, which is this filter statement. And after that, we create this like function skeleton to um, kind of where we're gonna encapsulate that functionality. So here we're creating um, a function called filter ACS with one argument called the minimum household income, min underscore house inc. So this is where our filtering will go inside the body between the curly braces. So now we can kind of see um, what this function might actually look like if we were to create it. So the function filter underscore ACS uh, will then kind of perform a filter on the ACS EDU data set with whatever value we provide to the median household, in, the minimum household income. 
So here we're going to say, hey, let's filter our census tract for values that are greater than $225,000. And we can see that there's two census tracts in Boston, uh, one of which is entirely white and one of which is mostly white. Um, unexpected given Boston and the racial disparities that exist within it. The next thing we want to think about is we get this general idea of how we can make a function, but how do we make functional model predictions or how do we serve predictions from a function? And for this, I want to kind of dive into the RStudio IDE and kind of run through this example together. So now that we're in the IDE, we have this very nice, uh, clean environment where we can kind of start doing our work. The first thing I want to do is to load the tidyverse because that's going to provide us with whatever we need to get things done. Um, particularly in this case, honestly, just read R for reading the data sets. So now we run this and uh, we're loading our packages as required. And since this is, this is a very long and messy URL, I'm going to save it into an object. And I've already kind of provided myself with some steps as that I'm going to take to uh, complete this project here. The first thing I want to do is actually read the data set. So I'm going to create a new variable called ACS EDU and assign it to the output of read CSV of the ACS URL. This reads each column as a double, which is exactly what I want. And then now what I want to do is create a model to predict the median household income of a Boston census tract based on two variables, which are going to be, let's preview the data real quickly, which are going to be portion of the census tract that has a bachelor's degree, as well as the proportion of the census tract that is white. Okay. So I'm going to call this my housing model and create a linear model, a linear regression of, I want to predict Y as the median house income by the combination of bachelor's attainment plus white. And then the data set we're going to use is equal to the ACS underscore EDU. So now I've created this model and we can kind of preview it. We see we have a 50 adjusted R square of 0.5. So it explains half the variance of the model. Um, so now that we have a model, we want to actually create our own predictions from it. And to do that, we have to use the predict function. Okay. And the first ob the first argument here is the object, the model object. So here we have housing underscore model, and then is actually the new data that we want to predict. Um, and it's going to expect a data frame. So before I can actually get to predicting, I need to make a data frame, which I'll call to predict. And the column names need to match what we put in here for predictions. So let's say, let's look at the, um, the case where half of the population has a bachelor's degree and half of the population is white. Okay. So now we have this object called to predict. I'll provide this as our, oopsies, predict, as our um, new data argument. So if we can look here, we're looking at the method of predict for uh, linear models. And this object, new data, is an optional data frame in which to look for variables with which to predict. Okay. So now if we run this, we see that the predicted median household income value is $128,000. Now, what if the um, census tract is in, has no white individuals, but everyone is everyone has a bachelor's degree? The median household income rises to $216,000. And when we want to make these multiple predictions with varying values, right? We want to find a way to be a bit more um, programmatic with it than just specifying different values in this object to predict and then passing into, to, into this predict function. When we want to repeat multiple things a couple of times, that's a really good sign that we want to create a function for it. Okay, so I'm going to create a function called um, pred income. And it's going to take two arguments. That's going to take prop white and um, let's call this attain edu rate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this in here, paste it inside the model, 
and then whatever, and this replace these hard coded values into the function arguments. So attain edu rate, and then prop white. So now I have this function predict income, and now I can try different values: 0 0.25, 0 0.25. And there we go, $67,000. Or we can go one and one to nearly $250,000. This is awesome. So now we have a function that we can use to kind of create predictions all the time. But um, the key thing to note here is that we are using a linear regression model that we've already predefined. In general, we don't want to have to recreate that model object every time you want to create the predictions. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually save this model for future use. To do that, we're going to use write RDS. It's going to save it as an RDS object. This is a serialized uh, R object that we can read into any R session. So if you have a list, a, a model object, a data frame, or whatever, it can be stored as an RDS object. So now the first argument is the name of the object that we want to store. So in this case, it's going to be housing model and then the path name so i'm gonna call this housing dash model dash rds and saved perfect so in the next video we're going to go over how to take this model and this function that we've created and turn it into a restful api with plumber